Hey, Pete, right here. <laughs> Congratulations, how are you feeling? Thank you, thank you. I'm feeling amazed. I don't even know what to say right now. I feel like I'm on, on 10 toes, ballerina dancing, and it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to ballerina dance, but now I do. <laughs> Is this kind of how you um, pictured your first UFC win going? Yeah, exactly how it is. Like, I lose sleep. After, I lose sleep. I literally lose sleep, and I get so anxious and so anxiety just picturing of how it's going to go, of how my walkout's going to be, what my walkout song is going to be from practices to the end. It's just everything's put together in my mind, and for me to compete and win the way that I did, it's just like it's, it's really stronger than what you can say it is. Like, it's really strong, and it's super powerful. And to be able to display that for everybody that was watching, my fans, my family, it's just so, it's, it's so, it's so blessing, and I'm super happy to be here. Do you feel like maybe this feeling is amplified because you are coming off a loss? Oh, certain, to certainly. To me, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it certainly is. Like, you're here to pre prove yourself, and... I'm not just a last-minute fight. I'm not just a, oh, this dude's a, a replacement. Like, I'm, I'm Pete Dead Game Rodriguez. Like, I'm here to make a statement. And if I, I'm, never, I'm never happy. Like, obviously, I'm happy, but I'm never going to be, oh, it's just a win. We got, we got Monday, we got work to do. We got to go right back to it because I'm not happy. I am happy with my performance, but at night, I know I can do it 100 times better. But like I said, I'm not just a last-minute fighter. I'm, I'm here to, to show you who I am. You know, people always say you never lose, you learn. What did you learn in your last fight? I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of things, the way that I stanced, the way that I took information in, the way that it was given, the way that everything. Like, I, I watched that fight. It was really hard for me to watch it at first. But then you just have to, you have to take in all of those feelings and you have to embrace them. And, and, hey, it is what it is. It's a fight game. Of course, it's going to suck. You wanted, to, you wanted your first win to be in the UFC 270, Anaheim. You wanted... You wanted you wanted to win, but like I said, you live and you learn, and there was a lot of things that I, I did for that fight that I did different this fight. Like what? Can you tell us? Um, not too much. Just like just my stance and my distance. My distance was a big thing that I had to learn. I didn't know too much about the distancing, and I, got, I found out in the beginning of this round, he hit me with a, a clean three as soon as I came in, so that as soon as he hit me with that three, I, I ranged my distance. I stepped back, and okay, and my coaches kind of calmed me down. Bernie kind of calmed me down, and coach calmed me down. And he said, hey, don't get too anxious. And as soon as I hit him with a body shot, um, I took my time from there. And like I said, everything that he said, it was, it's like he had a microphone in my ear, and everything that he said I was doing. And it's just so, because there's, there's a lot of things that you don't see in the cage. And the coaches are there to, to, to say those and do those things, and it works. What's next? How soon do you want to get back in there? And do you have an opponent in mind? I don't have nobody in mind. Whoever the UFC wants to throw at me, I'm here. Like I said, I'm not going to say no. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to buckle down, and I'm, I'm here to go. I don't have nobody in mind. Whoever the UFC wants to throw me at let's go. Let's run. Let's rock and roll. How soon do you want to get back in there? Are you thinking before the holidays? Or? Um, I'm still hungry. I can't say. I can't, I can't give you this time to say, like, hey, I want to jump back, but I do want to definitely get there soon. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't put a date on that. Thank you. Hey, Pete. Um, where did that game come from? Dead game just comes from, like, if you look in the Urban Dictionary, it'll tell you everything that dead game is. It's just a dog. Like, if you, it's just, it's just a dog, that dog mentality. If you want to hit me, you better kill me. And I'm, I'm going to come back up, and I'm still going to be in your, I'm still going to be in your, in, your, in your dreams. I'm going to haunt you in your dreams. Just look up in the Urban Dictionary what dead game is, and it'll give you the whole description of what that means. Who gave you that? My brother gave it to me. He, my brother's a, my, my brother, my oldest brother, Richard, he's one of my, my biggest fans. He's my number one. He's, he's my number one. He's my fan, and, and uh, he gave that to me, and we're just we just we just click. Me and my brother click. That's awesome. And then uh, finally for me, what is your I guess your throat chest tattoo with a heart? And I I see that there's like swords through it. Like what was the inspiration? There's no really meaning to it. Uh, I have it just for the Sacred Heart. It kind of goes in with everything. All my other tattoos like they have a meaning. So my grandma got my grandma on my left side. That's my first tattoo, and I have my angels. I have an angel on the on my right side. And then this was just to throw it in, but this is Sacred Heart to go like a whole religious piece because my grandma wasn't really too happy when I got my tattoo. And then when I showed her, she was, she was blessed. So every time I have my fight, she goes, oh, protect me, protect me. And I went in here and I protected her and I didn't let her get hit. Thanks for sharing that. You talked about things you see in the cage that set up where eventually you got him with the knee that led to the finish. Is that something that 
you knew going in that he was maybe susceptible, or is that something in the improvements that you've made that you were able to see that leading in that that would eventually be set up? No, nah, there was no there was no plan that we didn't plan it. There was nothing to be planned. We were working on me and my coaches were working on the body to go to the body right away, up and down feints, feint the jab, come in with the two, low two, high three. That was not in the game plan, but my coach seen it, John Crouch seen it. He seen him lean a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. He told me to connect with the elbow. I tried to connect with the elbow, I clipped him. And then as soon as he turned to the right, he was trying to switch angles and that's where that knee came up. I didn't even know what I hit him with first. I, I know I connected, but I didn't see him go down and then I hit him with another two and then I, I stopped, I knew he was out. And one of the things that the commentary team even talked about, you know, Mike was coming out there and was throwing a lot of one, one shot here, another shot here. They were saying that you were kind of throwing punches and bunches. Was that something that you wanted to really go in there and do was show your hands and make sure that you were doing multiple combinations? Oh, yeah, of course. This fighting's not a one-scale fight. You have to go out there one, two, three, one, four, five, whatever you have to do. It's not just, yeah, you want to throw a jab, jab to get in, a jab to work to create that distance to get in. But it's, it's, it, it played out in my part to throw those to throw those to throw those jabs and, and combinations. That's what fighting is. That's what makes martial artists is. And last, you talked about that last fight and what that did for you. How much did that last fight sort of motivate you and how long did you carry that on your shoulders and into the fight camp to motivate you and when did you feel like, okay, that fight's gone, I'm ready to focus fully on this one? Shit, right after this fight. It after. carried it carried the whole way. It carried me, it didn't, it was haunting me, it was haunting me. And, it was a ghost haunting me, and it kept on pushing me. Like, I, I barely got over it just right now after that win. So it, it lasted me throughout my whole my whole career through January. It, it's been there. And it, like I said, it was hard at first, but now we overcome, and we're here. And thank you to God. Everything that I do is for God. And it's, if he's not going to give you nothing, if you don't sacrifice, so you got to sacrifice for him to, to give you what you want. He'll give you whatever you want. You just got to sacrifice. You got to show him. You got to put in that hard work. So for from this point on, now you focus on what worked really well in this camp and then maybe fine-tune fine tweaking things? Correct, yeah, that's what I got amazing people at the lab for, and they helped me and they pushed me. And we got eyes everywhere. If you don't think there's eyes watching, someone will come up to you, hey, you're doing this wrong, you'll fix it, and then you, you take it along. That's a, there's a lot of people that there, even they're amateurs. They're amateurs are, are some head hunting killers. And I go in there, I'm like, damn, where do these motherfuckers come from? And they're out there, they're pushing me, and... It, at the end of the day, it's a hard-ass practice, but that's what keeps you coming back, and that's what keeps you motivated. You got everyone around you that wants to, to, to be in the same place that you, are, that you are in right now. So that's why I want to say thank you to the, all my coaches and everything that believed in me, that I'm, I'm right here doing this for them. That's awesome. Congrats on the victory.